Welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. In today's episode, I'm starting my Christmas crafting series and we're gonna do it with Dollar Tree. And the first DIY today is inspired by a Pottery Barn Twiggy Tree. And so to get this look, I'm going to use the Borax Crystal Method. So first you'll need one of the Dollar Tree white Christmas trees and a box of Borax. When you take the tree out of the box, it's up to you whether or not you wanna use the little stand legs or not. For this particular project, I'm not going to use them, but that's not to say you can't. To get the twiggy tree look, I decided I would need to give this tree a haircut. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim off all of the little pieces that makes this a Christmas tree, trying to cut as close to the wire as possible. I know this seems strange, but the crystals will look better with less of that white plasticky stuff. When you get done with that, it should look something like a shaved poodle, at least in my mind, I thought it did. And now you need to make sure that the branches are pointed in directions that's going to accommodate for whatever pot you're using. So you're gonna have a big pot of water with dissolved borax in it and whatever size pot you're using, you need to make sure that all of your branches are going to be able to be submerged into the water. And also try to spread your branches out so that they're not touching each other so much. Also, I prefer to use a pot that is not for cooking. So this is just a junk store pot and I'm filling it with two gallons of boiling water. To the water, I added seven cups of borax. And then stir until it's all dissolved and it only takes a couple of minutes. Then submerge your tree into the borax water and make sure that all your branches are covered. To get the best crystals, you need to let this set untouched for eight hours or overnight. So I started this project about 12.30 one day. I left it the whole rest of the day and overnight, and the next morning, this is what I came back to. It was perfect and exactly what I was hoping for. So the crystals did form on the little twiggy branches, and it looks just like ice. It looks like this is a tree that was outside in an ice storm, and I absolutely am mind blown. I heard someone say to spray sealant on your crystals once you're done, and I figured it couldn't hurt, and this is the kind I used. But that doesn't mean that the crystals won't fall off the tree. Some of them will. It's kind of like working with glitter, so it can be messy, but still worth it to get this pretty crystallized tree. Now the next part is optional. You could use the legs that come with the tree for it to stand up, but I decided to go more the Pottery Barn route, and so I'm using this block of wood, and I know it's already used. I use it for drilling holes in stuff, so I'm using this scrap wood, and it's gonna be my tree stand. So I've picked out a drill bit that's about the same size as the Christmas tree trunk, and I'm drilling a hole in the center of the wood block. I drilled as far as I could into the wood block without going through to the other side. Then you can take the cap off the end of the tree and it should fit down into the hole that you just drilled. I was happy with the fit so I used E6000 and put a little dab down inside the drilled hole just to make sure the tree is absolutely secure. Now you can use burlap or whatever fabric that you like to cover up the block of wood. And it's just going to be a simple, just wrap it up and gather it at the top and secure it with a piece of juice string. I'm sorry the camera is not at a good angle where you can see, but I'm just using a length of jute string and tying it in a double knot to keep all of that fabric gathered.
Then you can add your lights. And this is just a strand of Dollar Tree lights. And I would like to have more lights. If there's a longer strand of lights, um, if you have that, then use a longer strand because I felt like these could use just a few more. Here's a little peek at how it turned out, but stay till the end of the video to see it just a little bit more decorated. In this DIY, I'll be using some of the clear plastic Christmas balls from the Dollar Tree. I have three sets, so I have six total. And I thought it would be fun to paint them up some non-traditional Christmas colors. So I've got some night sky blue, sandstone, and truffle Waverly chalk paint. So I'm just using a pencil and that is what's holding my ornament while I paint it. It's not the ideal situation, but it was helpful. These will require two coats of paint. And if I had one tip to give, use thin light coats that way it'll go on way smoother and i didn't worry with the part where the hanger goes it's not painted at all i absolutely love these colors together they're not really traditional but they kind of say elegant to me and go very well with my pottery barn inspired little tree I did use my hair dryer to quickly dry these right after I painted them, but you have to be very careful not to get too close to the ornament because they're plastic and a hair dryer on its highest setting will melt it. Now that my base layer colors are on, I'm gonna add some fusion gold paint and I'm gonna do a very, very dry brush so it doesn't take very much of this paint at all. And as a matter of fact, you could use different products if you have a gold rub and buff that you would like to use, that would be really pretty. Or even some acrylic gold paint would probably work pretty well too. Now I didn't paint the hangers. If that bothers you that they are silver and the paint on the balls is gold and you think they should match, you could absolutely paint the hangers whatever color you like. It just didn't bother me that bad. However, I am going to replace the silver thread with a piece of ribbon. And while I was at the Dollar Tree, I also picked up some of these smaller ornaments and there were so many of them that I decided to paint a few. And this time I figured out an easier way to paint these smaller balls because a pencil wouldn't fit up through the hole in them. So. I'm using my color pencils <laughs> that kind of stick into the ball a little bit and then I wrap some electrical tape around the pencil and the part of the ornament that the hanger goes on and it made a really nice temporary attachment so that I was able to hold these balls on a stick and paint them a whole lot better. If I would have had a styrofoam block to set these down in to dry, that's probably what I would have used. I didn't have one, so I'm just using some tall mason jars. I'm using Snow White Waverly chalk paint to paint these, and these painted up just whip snap like a dream, and I only had to use one coat. Now I'm gonna do some wet distressing on them. So very simple, just take a wet rag and rub on the places where you would like some of the original color to shine through. And with the little bit of gold peeking through after this wet distressing, these little ornaments match the ones that I painted previously so well. And the last step to making these really pretty is to use some satin ribbon or even velvet. Velvet would be really pretty, but I went with the color brown so that it would go with all of my ornaments. There's also another set of little ornaments at the Dollar Tree that I really liked their pattern. They look kind of quilty. So I took all the gold ones out of that package and I'm adding them to my new DIY set of ornaments. And the only thing I'm gonna do to them is replace their hangers with the satin ribbon.
And this DIY is a stocking from Dollar Tree that I'm going to give it a makeover to match all of our other decorations we've made today. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the snowflake off of the front of it, which is just hot glued on. So it's really easy to remove and peel off the dried hot glue. So it's really simple. You'll notice that there is a piece of cardboard inside of the stocking and you'll want to leave that inside because we're going to do some painting on the stocking and you don't want the paint to go through to the back side. There was no way to really remove that plaid top without removing the top entirely. So I'm going to cover it up with some scrap fabric that I have. It used to be a dishcloth and it, its color matched the stocking perfectly. So I'm just going to cut out some pieces and hot glue around to cover up that plaid top. After I hot glued the bottom edge, I cut the excess off of the top, leaving an allowance to tuck it inside of the stocking and glue it on the inside too. And I also made sure that my piece of fabric was big enough that it can fold around to the back side. Then I cut another piece of fabric to cover the back side and I did it just the same way as I did the front side, except that the edges don't wrap around to the front. They just kind of connect where I left off with the other piece. And with these few little adjustments and a little time, <laughs> then you have a much higher end looking stocking than what you started out with from the Dollar Tree. And the next step is to paint it up. So this is really simple. Anybody can do this because I'm not a painter and I can do it. So I know y'all can too. I'm using a slanted edge brush. I don't know the technical name for this brush, but it's got a slanty edge and I'm going to draw some pine trees with it. I'm using my Fusion Gold paint. It's really important to use a nice fabric paint or some sort of paint that's not just going to soak into the fabric and then it's not gonna look very gold. It'll just look kind of orangey yellow. So get a quality gold paint to do this with. And it's really simple. Just draw out your tree trunks or paint on your tree trunks. I did three, three or four, I can't remember. You'll have to see how many I paint, but just draw some lines like I'm doing right here. Then starting at the top of each line, I just did some slanted downward strokes to make the branches. After you get the branches painted in, then just do on each branch some really small little pine needle looking swipes. They're just going downward and I do both sides of the branch. So I liked to go in the downward strokes first because it makes a difference how you hold your brush. Remember, we're using a slanted brush, so you want to point your slant so that it makes wispy lines. So once you play around with this, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that's basically it. It's just painting some little lines with a brush. I recommend to practice on a piece of paper first and you'll get the hang of it really quickly, I promise. And here is the Pottery Barn inspired twig tree and it's little white ornaments and gold ornaments on it. Time for a cute critter video.
Thanks for watching everyone. The Critters and I hope you got some good ideas and inspiration. If you want to see more Christmas crafting, click the link that I've provided for you right here and I'll see you next time. Bye!